Good morning, Knicks Nation. It is Friday, the 19th of March, 2021. Happy Friday to you. I hope you're all healthy, uh, COVID free, and that your needs are being met. Double blessings on those that work in the healthcare field, trying to save lives, trying to even comfort those that are dying and risk their own lives to do so. Double blessings also on those that pick up our garbage and those that deliver goods and services with 18 wheel trucks and vans, sometimes cars, sometimes bicycles to deliver information, goods and services that we take for granted. Double blessings also on those that are working to free men and women, boys, girls, and teenagers from sex slave operations. And curses on those that support the sex slave industry. Also, double blessings on those that are helping the homeless. 500,000 plus in the United States alone. Men, women, and children living on the street in the United States of America. And veterans who have selflessly served this country. In faraway lands, living on the street in the country they served. And among the millions of those worldwide that don't have a roof over their head today. Double blessings on those helping the homeless and the homeless. And may soon this situation be forever ended. There was a basketball game last night. At Madison Square Garden in the greatest city in the world, New York City. Our New York Knicks played against the Orlando Magic. And as usual, it was a tough game. We hardly blow the Magic out. The Magic, there's some teams that no matter what the situation, the records don't matter. Because it's going to be a dogfight. When the Knicks play the Nets, when the Knicks play the Magic, when the Knicks play the Hawks. Those type of games are going to be a dogfight regardless of schedule regardless of the records. It's just always been that way. When the Knicks play the Heat. And so last night was the Magic. And then, as usual, the you know, the usual suspects showed up at the Knicks killers. You know, uh, Vucevic and Evan Fournier. The only guy that didn't really show up, and I, I don't think he played last night, was Terrence Ross. Um, he was the the, you know, usually these are the no usual suspects that are the Nick killers, you know, uh, Terrence Ross, um, uh, Evan Fournier, uh, uh Terrence Ross was, did not play sore right knee. That's why I didn't see him. Terrence Ross, Evan Fournier, Vucevic. And on top of all that, the most dangerous team to play in the NBA is a desperate team. Uh, they had lost coming into the game, I believe, Orlando had lost eight straight. I'm not looking at it now, but I believe they had lost eight straight coming into the game. Okay. So, uh, yeah, they did. They lost eight straight coming into the game. So they were desperate to win, to get a win. On top of that, they're desperate to save their coach's job. Good guy named Steve Clifford, Clifford, who used to be an assistant coach with the New York Knicks. Um, and he lost his, he had a, um, head coaching job in Charlotte prior, prior. And we're going to talk more about Charlotte in a few minutes, but, um, you know, he lost that job. And then he's now he's in, a, he's in, uh, Orlando and he's been hit with some stuff, man. I mean, um, we know that Jonathan Isaac is gone for the season. Mark Earl Fultz is gone for the season. I mentioned Terrace Ross. He didn't play last night. They ended up calling up a former Nick. Chasing Randall. Guy actually, you know, a lot of us like, I like Chasing Randall to start at point guard last night. And Chasing did a pretty good job. He just had one problem Frank Nilkina. <laughs> we'll talk more about Frank in a minute. So the Knicks started off slow against Orlando. They ended the first quarter with Orlando up by two. And uh, they went into the, into the half. Uh, I think the Knicks were up by one at the half. So it was a close game. Um, and then, of course, our all-star, official all-star, and hopeful all-NBA player, Julius Randle, 
you know, he, he did his thing. Triple double, third triple double of the season. Um, and 17 assists. 17 assists. Now, um, and, and what it was like, it wasn't just like because the Knicks were hot that he had these assists. He was finding the right guys. He found Frank a couple of times. He found, he was looking for his boy. It seems like his boy now is Bullet. I noticed that, that him and Bullock got a little chemistry going. And so, and Bullock has six, Bullock was seven to 16 last night and six of his baskets were three pointers. He had six three pointers last night, six of 13 from the three point line. And, and pretty much, I think all of those shots, if not most of them were from Julius Randle looking for him, looking for, looking for Bullock. And so, um, they had, they have a chemistry going. Uh, they've developed this chemistry, especially since EP has been out. This seems to have become Julius Randle's homie right here, uh, Bullock. And they brought Bullock off the bench. So as we know now, looking at it here, it's Friday, right? The game was last night. Frank started at the point guard. And then you had Burks starting. And I can understand the rationale. They're trying to add offense with Burks. And then, you know, they start in Frank for the defense. Now, um, um, again, I respect Thibodeau. Totally respect Thibodeau. And we won the basketball game. But I disagree with Burks. And the reason I do is if you watch the game, NBA teams, including the Knicks, they exploit the weakness of the other team. And Burks is, uh, as far as the rotational players, he's the weakest defensive player we have in the rotation, the regular rotation. Offensively, he can become dynamite. And we know that he's streaky, but, um, and he's prone to turnovers, especially when he plays the point guard position. But, he he doesn't he doesn't play good defense. There was a couple of times where he caused fouls for other players because of his lack of IQ on the defensive end. I mean, he gives his effort. There's no question. Otherwise, I don't think Tom would play him at all. But he's just you know he's just not the best defender you know that we have out there. And that, of that five, he was the weak link, and that part of the reason Orlando was off to the good start they were on. Burke they were exploiting him. Okay, he was late. You cannot. Guard the three-point line by running at the three-point shooter after they're already in their shooting motion. It's too late. In the NBA, that's too late, okay? Unless you're Mitchell Robinson and you can block it because of that athletic ability, which is rare. But it's really too late. What you have to do is, is meet the guy there when he gets the ball and chase him off the line. And if he wants to try to, you know, force a shot with you on him, that's like Stephen Curry does. Then, or, 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 um, uh, the kid from Atlanta, then, you know, they do that, but that's a low percentage shot for most people. So you want to chase him off the line. You don't want to have him catch the ball, be in his shooting motion when you're trying to run at him. And that was what Burks was doing. Okay. But, and the thing about Frank, and this is, I, I'm surprised very few people bring this up that criticize him, maybe because they just haters anyway. The more minutes he plays, the better he gets and the better the team is. Especially when he goes over 25 minutes and then it goes to another level when he goes over 30 minutes. When Frank Nilakina plays 30 minutes, it's a, he's a different player. He's one of those guys. I mentioned this a few months ago. There was a guy I grew up with that we played ball. And we both played, you know, for the high school, right? And the coach that coached us on the junior varsity was not, he was the assistant coach on the varsity. And these, and the vars, and the two coaches were completely different philosophies. They, they tried to have a united front, but obviously they were different. And, there, and this player brought out that difference. When he, he played on the junior varsity, every game, he would start off turning the ball over. He would start off looking like he was lost. He would fumble the ball. And if you just pull them out after that first five minutes or so, you know, that's it. But if you let him play through that, by the time you got to the third quarter, he was dominating the game. Okay. So the, the, the assistant coach always, you know, was vibing to keep him in the game. Let him get the lather up. Let him get the sweat up. And he's going to be good at the end. Varsity coach wasn't having the first three minutes. If he turned the ball over, he was pulled out. And then he would spend any time he got on the court looking over his shoulder. That's Frank. See, if you play Frank and let him look 
you know, shaky in the first quarter and let him play defense like he does from the opening tip, but offensively just let him go, let him get that, let him get those kinks out, let him play through his mistakes. And I want to tell you over the four years in the four coaches that he has had, nobody's done that. He gets it in spots like last night. And I think the universe was saying something. All the guards was out and you had to start Frank Nilakina. And you had to let him play through his mistakes in the first half. And you had to keep him out there. And look what happened. Okay? Nobody was talking about how stinky, uh, well, some of y'all was, but then there's some knuckleheads in this nation as well. But uh, when RJ was one for 21 and shooting like he was Ray Charles, nobody was like, take him out of the lineup. But Frank, He's 0 for 12, and all of a sudden, he's, he's terrible. It's, it's... Anyway, last night, they let him play. He had to. Not only did he play lockdown defense, but he hit three. What was he? He was two of three from the line, three of seven from three, four of nine from the from the field. They credited him with one steal, but if you watch the game, he caused at least three steals with that defense. He caused at least three steals. And I was a little disappointed because there was a stretch in the fourth quarter where we needed his defense. And Tibbs waited two minutes to me too long to put him back in the game. And it caused problems. Okay. He finally put him back in there and we, we were able to shore up the D a little bit. Um, it was also questionable to me that you didn't have him in, in that last minute when you need to make sure you lock down everybody in the earth. Like at the end of the third quarter, you know, Evan Fournier is the Nick killer. You know he's going to get the ball. And he had, I don't know who he had, but it wasn't Frank. I think it was Burks or he had Bullock on him and Evan Fournier torched him. Okay. Frank and Fournier know each other from friends. And Fournier know Frank and Locke is behind them. And that's why I was like, you got to put him on that guy. Right. Fournier was the child. And then, of course, the last play of the game, who did they look for? Evan Fournier. Of course. So Bullock makes an excellent defensive play. He really did at the end to redeem himself. They put Frank in prior to that, and, and he is, he's staring there looking at Bullock, and Bullock is holding the ball until they double him and cause the jump. Anyway, those things were driving me crazy. But last night, I am glad they played Frank, and he allowed him, because of the situation, to play through his mistakes. Let RJ do that. He sh- if you look at Moutier, when he was here, he did that in Denver. Dennis Smith Jr. was starting for almost two full seasons in Dallas. Frank's never got that up. In four seasons, in four quarters, he never got that opportunity. Fine. But last night, they had to do it. And, you know, so I, I just, I want to see him get those minutes. They We need that defense. And if you let him play through his mistakes, his shot will come. As soon as Mike Miller became coach last year, you started seeing Frank get more minutes. And then all of a sudden, in March, he gets a 20-point game. That's no coincidence. Okay? And now this year's minutes were spotty. Then he got hurt. Then he was out of rotation. He doesn't play well in those scenarios. That's why I'm almost hoping they trade him. And that's coming to my next point. I'm almost hoping they trade him because if he was on San Antonio or Toronto or Orlando, he would get time. Or Minnesota, he would get that 25, 30 minutes a game and he'd be a different player. Okay. He'd be a different player. And this is going to be interesting because we're going to know in the next seven days if Frank's going to break the Charlie Ward, Ward curse because he's a restricted free agent this summer. So the Knicks, after drafting him eight overall, you'd be, they're not that stupid. They're not going to lose him for nothing. So either they're going to trade him in the next seven days or they're going to resign him over the summer. It, you know, that's it. Okay. It comes down to that. So we're going to know in the next seven days whether Frank Nilakina is going to be a Nick next year. We're going to know in the next seven days if he's going to be a Nick next year. Okay. So Sunday, it's going to be interesting because, um, Sunday, they're playing a big game against Philly. And this is going to be a big game. And the reason I say that, because right now, the Knicks are tied for sixth in the East. They're tied for sixth with Charlotte. And Atlanta is a half game up on both Charlotte and the Knicks. Now, we're going to see if Atlanta's for real. 
We're going to see. They've been on a hot streak. They don't want seven straight. They're eight and two in their last ten since. I told y'all, Nick Miller's a real deal. Now, I'm not saying that the guy that they fired was a bad coach. He was a good coach. But Nate McMillan, to me, is a Hall of Fame coach. My type of guy, like I say, Tom Thibodeau is the Caucasian version of Nate McMillan. Nate McMillan, he's a really good coach. I was really disappointed that Indiana let him go. But whatever. Now he's coaching Atlanta, and all of a sudden they're 8-2 and two with a seven-game streak. We're going to see if they're for real, though, because they play tomorrow, Saturday, they play the Lakers. And they follow that up. And I think the both games are on the road on Monday against the Clippers. Okay. So they play the Lakers and LeBron and the Clippers. I expect them to go 0 and 2 unless they're for real. If they for real, see, listen, the Knicks have been going through this grinder all year, having the toughest schedule in the NBA. Everybody's surprised. We already at 21 wins. We, we two wins away from blowing Vegas. So, some people going to make a lot of money that, that bet the over on the 22 and a half that Vegas was talking about we're going to win. And, and, and let's not even talk about ESPN talking about we're going to be the worst team in the league. Here we are tied for the sixth seed. And we've been in the six to eight seed like all season. Told y'all. Talking about some of y'all talking about we Knicks need talent. And some people still talking that foolishness. We could use a couple of pieces, but so can a lot of teams. The biggest talent the Knicks got is Tom Thibodeau, followed by Mike Woodson and Kenny Payne. And then, of course, Johnny Bryant. You know, that's the biggest talent they got. And that was enough to get us to where we at now. Now, he's deve- we're developing the first year of our rebuild. We start, we talking playoffs. Okay. All right. So I'm expecting Atlanta's 21 and 20. They lose these next two games to, and Clippers another desperate. The Clippers are disappointing everybody this year to the point where people are thinking that, and it's possible that Kawhi might opt out. So the Clippers got to get a win. And even in their desperation, they 26 and 16, fourth in the West. Okay. So, so <laughs> they still a juggernaut. So, so, and the, the Lakers have won four straight. I expect Atlanta to lose these two games. They're going to be 21 and 22 come Tuesday morning. Okay. Now that opens up an opportunity. Now the Charlotte Hornets, I told y'all during the draft, I was 50 50 on, on ball. I did not want to take a chance because he could be superstar or bust. And I didn't want to take a chance on that. As you'll remember, I was pushing for Devin Vassell, Tyrese Halliburton. I was pushing for, for Pat Williams, you know, people like that, you know, because they were more sure, even Isaac Okoro, because I felt like they were more sure as far as NBA ready, right? But I said, Melo is boom or bust. This kid is complete boom, kapow, blow up. Charlotte's for real. I mean, who would have known when you're looking at Charlotte? First of all, who I would have never guessed that they would get Gordon Hayward. And I thought they was fools for paying him all that money. I still think that they overpaid for him. Like, he paid $120 million for this cat. This dude is balling out. And who would have thought that Scary Terry? Scary Terry going off, man. Scary Terry was almost a Nick last year. He, was, In fact, he said he thought he was going to be a Nick. But he going off in Charlotte. Malik Monk coming into his own. P.J. Washington. Charlotte's for real. And they, and their bench with Monk, uh, Miles Bridges, their bench is the deal. The only thing they're missing right now, for real, is more experience for LaMelo, a little bit more experience, and the center. And, and the league is flush with fives. And they got one of the, I mean, Cody Zeller is a, is a career backup. You know, if they got a real starting center, like if they got Drummond, they're going to be a problem. They're going to be a problem. So they're for real. I don't even know what is their schedule coming up. They're going to be, they're, you know, they're, they're a problem. So I'm thinking, let's see. They play the Clippers. Ooh, they play the Clippers tomorrow. So that's, you know, that's going to be a tough one for them. Um, well, who they play after that? And then on Monday, they play the Spurs. Ooh, another one. They're going to go through the test. They about to go through the test. So I could see it's totally possible now. The Knicks, well, put it this way. The Knicks have an opportunity. Let's just put it that way. 
The Knicks play Philly on Sunday, and we need to come back and beat them. After that game the other night, we need to come back and beat them. That was the second night of a back-to-back. And guess what? Philly's going to be on the second night of a back-to-back when we play them on Sunday. So it's their turn, you know, to see that fatigue. And so we play them Sunday. If we can beat Philly, we'll be 22 and 21. It's very conceivable. Charlotte can be 20 and 22. It's very conceivable that Atlanta could be 21 and 22 and we could be 22 and 21 and have sole possession of the fifth seed in the East by come, come Tuesday. Come Tuesday. Okay. It's very possible. Miami Heat, um, you know, they're in the fourth spot. They're a game and a half ahead of us. I, I think they're probably in their next two. I looked at their schedule too, and I'm thinking they're going to go one and one in their next. They got, let's see, they lost to Memphis last night, but, and they got Indiana, um, on Sunday. And then Tuesday, they got back to back. They play Indiana twice. It's one of those, you know, everybody's doing that this year for some reason. They, they, they play, they play Indiana twice and they got Memphis. They just lost to Memphis last, uh, Wednesday. And then they play tonight. They play tonight against Indiana and they play Sunday against Indiana. You know, they, they're a good team. Miami's for real. You know, we already said that, right? When we, when they were losing, when we played them and they beat us, we knew they were going to be there at the end. I mean, that's how Eric Spolster's teams go. They start off slow, but. They come back strong and they, they finish stronger than they start usually. Okay. And so, um, I'm not surprised at that. I'm thinking, and since they lost last night, a t- close one, 89, 85, they lost on a key Wednesday. They'll probably go one and one against Indiana. They'll probably go one and one against Indiana. So they go one and one. And then that means they're going to end up being 22, 23 and 20, 23 and 20. So they'll probably still hang on to the fourth spot. But Atlanta and Charlotte are there for the taking. So we can, we can move up into the fifth spot and be, have sole possession of the fifth spot in the East. Um, by Tuesday, if we beat Philly on Sunday, that's a big thing. We got to beat Philly on Sunday. Now, um, Derek Rose, I'm expecting Rose to be back because last night he was actually hanging around the team. He was there. He was at the game last night. He was on the court shooting and stuff. So I'm thinking the protocol stuff is done. I'm expecting Rose to play Sunday. That's going to be a big difference. Frank has now got confidence, and I believe Thibodeau's got confidence in him, so I'm expecting to see Frank get 20, 25 minutes, maybe more, hopefully, Sunday at the point guard spot with him and Rose. I'm not sure about IQ because IQ had the um, groin problem from last weekend, and he was questionable. If you remember, earlier this week, he was questionable. And then he hurt his ankle on the top of it. So I'm not expecting him to be back. Um, I'm thinking, honestly, if we go by what we've seen in terms of Tibbs' habits, I think EP's out of the rotation right now. I, I don't care if he's ready or not. I don't think he's in the rotation right now. Okay? And if, if, the, if the Knicks win Sunday in Philly with Frank and D. Rose, I don't expect to see EP in the rotation unless somebody else gets hurt. And this for entirely possible, you know, this, this, the NBA people get hurt all the time. So especially these nagging little injuries, but, um, we'll see, you know, but, uh, the defense, the Nick defense, look at this game last night, man. I mean, the final score, 94, who are you, which one of y'all is talking about? You know, we're not going to see scores like that because this ain't the nineties no more. And I was telling y'all defense is defense. I don't care what era it is. Defense is defense. Okay. Now it's, it's much more, you know, soft right now than it was in the nineties. It's much, it's less physical. And, and, be, you know, they're very careful about the three point shooters. But you see, in the nineties, you could crowd the three point shooter, right? And, 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 and throw them off. And that, today, that's a foul. Um, in the nineties, you could hand check. Today, that's a foul too. So today, the difference is, see, teams, NBA players, teams, they adjust to what the situation is. And, they, and remember, you're talking about the 300 or so best basketball players on the planet that play in the NBA. Okay. A lot of them are also among the tremendously greatest athletes on the planet. Okay. So with that in mind, the way is now you can't do what you did in the nineties. The game is, like I said, from the three point line, you got to chase the guys off. So you need speed and length to chase people off the three point line today. And you need to be able to switch your hips and move. Watch Frank Nilakina. 
You need to be able to switch your hips and move and get ahead of the, the guy that you're guarding instead of hand checking. Okay. That's the difference now. So your best defensive player can chase your guys off the three point line and they can stay in front of their, uh, of their man. That's the important thing today in today's NBA. And so the Knicks as a team are doing that, you know, very well. Randall, Noel, Mitchell Robinson, RJ, they're doing much better. Uh, Bullock, they're doing much better. Taj Gibson is a pro at this. Last night, to me, what helped Bullock was having Gibson out there. I'm not saying Bullock is a bad defender. Bullock is a good defender. And I, but you know what? I told y'all, Bullock's, to me, his highest value is a bench piece on a championship team or a playoff team. He's not the guy you want starting on your championship team. And last night he came off the bench and scored 20 and played tremendous defense, right? And, and, and we won the game at the end of the game, right? He did that did bonehead play, but I mean, just in general, he played very good ball last night. Very good. He scored 20, like I said, six, six threes. He had three assists, three steals. One of those steals with Frank knocked it to him, but whatever. But we have a good defensive team. I did a video. Y'all saw, some of y'all saw it, right? The Knicks were coming with elite defense this year. I told y'all. And well, here we are. And I told y'all they were going to get better as the year went on. Here we are. And you know what? With eventually, quickly is going to be back. Right? And I, like I said, I think Rose is going to be back for Sunday. Thibodeau has confidence in Frank. He's showing it now. He always spoke highly of him. But now, I think it's not hard to see. He made a mistake last night. And I, I, if you notice, watch the game. If you see the replay of the game in the fourth quarter, like I said, there was a point where I said, okay, it's time to bring Frank back in. It's time to bring Frank back in. Because they were starting to get hot again in the match. I said, it's time to bring him. He waited two minutes. And I saw what happened. Tiz was so into the game. I don't think he was thinking about that. Johnny Bryan comes over and whispers something to him. And then all of a sudden, Frank comes in. That's why you got a good coach. You understand? You got Woodson. Johnny Bryant, Kenny Payne, right? That's why you got those guys, man. That's why you got those guys. And so, yeah, I'm very excited about our team. I'm very excited about how we're going forward. Now, if they trade Frank, um, what would they trade Frank for? Fonzo Ball. Listen, if you're New Orleans, right, that boy ain't stupid. I told you, Griffin ain't no fool. David Griffin is a smart, smart executive, okay? And so he's not stupid. Now, look at what he has. He's got Lonzo Ball, and the word is out there. I mean, sometimes I don't listen, most of the time, honestly, I don't listen to most of the uh, rumors that are out there. A lot of people come at me and say, you heard this, you heard that. I hear a lot of crap, but I don't pay attention to most of it. And you hear me, I don't talk about most of it. But sometimes, where there's smoke, you know, there's fire. And when you look at the Ball family, just in general, both LaMelo and their father, LaVar, won in New York. And when the Lakers, when it was known that the Lakers were going after Anthony Davis and that they were going to send a package that probably included Ball, when LaVar caught wind of that, he said, I want my son in New York. I don't think that's changed. So here we are. They had till December to extend, that is the Pels, to extend Lonzo Ball. They did not do it. So Ball is going to be a restricted free agent. The Pels, it's already come. Everybody's now understanding what we already knew. They got to, they're going to resign Zion. They're going to max out Zion. There's no question. So they got to prepare, uh, uh, you know, a well over $100, $150 million contract in the next season or so for Zion Williamson. Okay, that's they're going to they're not going to waste any time. First opportunity they get. This is Zion's what second year. If after the third year he's eligible for the extension, he's going to get it and he's going to get it big. Okay, So you got him. You locked in Brandon Ingram at a max deal. So what they would want. Is some good role players. And one more max guy. That's what they want. If they can get one more max guy. And some good role players, they'll be in business. Okay. They'll be in business. So they don't want to max out L L Lonzo Ball. They don't even want to come close to that. 
So the number I thought, I didn't think they would go over 18 million. And I think even Mark Berman said it, but I saw him pro, pro basketball talk. They were talking about maxing him. The max they will give him is 17. Listen, I don't think Lonzo Ball is worth more than 18. Except this reason. Listen carefully what I'm about to tell you. What you got to think about when you're looking at this situation is not what Lonzo Ball is worth on the open market. See, most players, nine times out of ten, you're going to look at what they're worth on the open market. That's what you're going to do. You got to look at it is what is Lonzo Ball worth to the New York Knicks? What do I mean by that? If you put Lonzo at the starting point guard beside RJ, okay? Now, let's say we don't get, um, what's his name? Uh, I'd like to get Zach Levine. I mean, but who wouldn't at this point? I mean, it's well known the boy's now established himself as a star. He's 26 years old. He's in his prime, blah, blah, blah. But look, I think Evan Fournier is going to be available. Now, we ain't got to pay Evan Fournier what he's making now. He's 28. He's in his prime. Evan Fournier is making 18 right now. He ain't going to get that going forward. I don't think so. But he's in his prime. He's making his money. But even if you did pay him 18, check out this lineup. Lonzo at the point. Evan at the two. RJ at the three. Now, Levine would be better than Evan, no question. But as some of y'all pointed out, which is real, it's not necessary. I mean, Levine's not available. And Chicago's not going to trade him only if he demands a trade. But one thing all y'all saying he's not leaving Chicago need to understand that you don't understand is in the real world, players, agents, and management talk to each other when they're not supposed to be. Communications are happening when you don't think they're happening. And if a player desires to go to another place and the management understands that, especially Zach next year, at the end of next year, he's going to be a free agent again. They got to extend him. If they know he's going to want to walk, they're going to try to get what they can for him now. Okay. If if that's known. Now, I don't know if it is, but all I'm saying to y'all is it's possible. We don't know. But let's assume for the sake of argument that there's probably a 90% chance we do not sign. Zach Levine. Evan Fournier is very available. He's very available. I'm telling you, they're getting ready to tear this mess down in Orlando and start over with Fultz, with Jonathan Isaac. They, well, who else? They're they going to start over with Fultz, Jonathan Isaac. Who else? Uh, uh, Mo Bamba. You're going to see Mo Bamba. If they don't trade Mo Bamba, he's going to play. And they're going to probably try to get what they can for Vucevic, even though he's an all-star level player. Um, they're going to do what they need to do. They're going to clean house and start with these young cats. Okay. And try to, you know, if they can get a Kay Cunningham or Jalen Suggs to pair with a Markel Fultz, that's what they're going to do. You know, that's what I would do if I was them. So I say that to say Fournier is available. Okay. And we may, may not even have to give up much to get him. Okay. So again, we're talking trade deadline. Frank is probably on the block. If they keep Frank, then they're going to re-sign him this summer. If, if he lasts past this deadline, that boy, I already told y'all he's Frankie Cat. He got nine lives. Every single season, I'm not even exaggerating, from his rookie deal, he's been in trade conversations. Every single season. From his rookie year. There's been turmoil in the front office over him. Okay? Mills wanted him. Perry didn't. Okay? That's what it was. And so Perry's still there. I don't know how Rose feels about him. That Rose used to represent him. And I know Tibbs now likes Frank. He's a defender. Why wouldn't he? So um, we're going to see. It's going to be very interesting. We're going to see what happens. Now, if they if they trade Frank, I can see them going after Lonzo Ball because New Orleans not going to let Ball walk for nothing. That he, they're not going to do that. And they know they're going to lose him. So I think that that Griffin was holding out to see the max he can get for him. No, there's no market for him if everybody knows he's going to New York. There's no market for him. See, that's the thing. If you, if, this is a game, a chess game, y'all. And so, if the league is is out there understanding, you know, Ball wants to go to New York. Nobody's going to offer any assets for him unless he agrees to go to whatever team. 
Now, what teams would he go to? The Lakers. And he's not going back to the Lakers. Okay? The Clippers need a point guard. Maybe they go after him. The Clippers desperately need a point guard. Okay? So, to me, the Clippers are really the only threat. But if Lonzo decides, you know, I, I'm from L.A., I played in L.A., let me go to New York. Then they ain't going to even try. Why? If he doesn't want to be there. And if he, he's restricted at the end of this year. And he won't sign an extension. No, there's a 90% chance Ball comes to New York. The only question is, is he coming now for Frank Nilakina and Kevin Knox? Or is he going to sign later in the summer? That's the only question. We're getting, I, I want to tell you right now, I'm making a prediction. We're going to get Lonzo Ball as our point guard. We're, too, we're playing too well. I'd love to get Kate Cunningham. I'm really holding out hope against hope that we can get Kate or Jalen, but I, I know some of y'all understand we're not going to get them because we're just playing too well. And our packages would have, it probably cost us a lot. Even though I really think Kate Cunningham is on that Luka Doncic level, we're building up a lot and we gave up a lot once when we were building up for Carmelo Anthony. And I really don't want to do that again if we don't have to, you know? So, there's a 90% chance we're going to have Lonzo Ball. The only question is, are we going to have him next week or are we going to have him in July? That's the only issue. Or July, August, whenever free agency is. That, that's the only issue. We're going to, Lonzo Ball is going to be a Nick. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm, 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 I'm claiming that, predicting that right now. Lonzo Ball is going to be, I'm not telling you, I'm telling you. This is raw Hebrew saying, Lonzo Ball is going to be a Nick. I'm willing to take the hit if I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. Lonzo Ball is going to be a Nick. Now, if they don't trade Frank next week, they're going to re-sign Frank Nilakina. And they're going to get Lonzo Ball. So here's, here's your lineup. Here's your lineup. We're not even talking about Evan Fournier. The, though he's available, I'm not sure how high the Knicks are on Evan Fournier. If they're high on him, he's going to be a Nick next week. Next week, he's going to be a Nick. Okay? Next week, if they're high on him. But if not, you're talking about R.J. Barrett. Lonzo Ball, probably Reggie Bullock for now, right? You're talking about Mitchell Robinson, and you're talking about Julius Randle. Your second unit is going to be Frank with Derrick Rose. And Alec Burks. And Nerlens Noel. That's your second unit. And then probably Obi Toppin. That's your second unit. I'm all in, baby. I'm all in. So this is a very big week for the New York Knicks right here. This is It's exciting to be a New York Knicks fan. This is a very big week. Sunday's a very big game. We got to beat Philly this Sunday. We can take sole possession of fifth spot in the East. It's a big week, okay? Um, and then let's see what happens by next Thursday. If they don't trade Frank by next Thursday, they're going to resign him. If they trade him, I'm looking for some talent like Alonzo Ball or Evan Fournier to be in here. I'm telling you, uh, if they're interested in Fournier, they will get him. And not only that, like I said, Fournier and Frank are buddies from France, man. They know each other. They play together. They play together on the World Cup. So we're going to see what happens, man. It's going to be very interesting, though. It's going to be very, very interesting um, to see what happens this next week. But these are this is a huge weekend. Um, Sunday night, my man Jay Ellis from Nick of Time and myself going to be going over the game um, that they play Sunday night. They play 8 o'clock. It's going to be past my bedtime, but I'm going to hang out because this is an important weekend for our Knicks. In the meantime, have a great weekend, y'all. Be safe. Enjoy life. Because it's short. It could cut short any time. Enjoy your life. Live right. Shalom.